Hello, Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. This week, I want to talk a little bit about the Christmas carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, uh, the offspring of the virgin's womb. Uh, one of the things I love about this time of year here in Advent and at Christmas is some of the great Christmas carols. They are full of incredible theology. And one of my favorites is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And one of the verses, it says, Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb, veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, Play, pleased as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. There's so much theology in there, but I really want to focus on that idea of late in time behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. This is referencing the great promise in scripture that the seed that was going to come was in fact going to come through a virgin. And the root uh, the, the very seed of this promise regarding this offspring is all the way back in Genesis 3.15. When God gives the promise to Eve, it's, it's part of the curse on the serpent, but implicit in it is a promise to Eve. And he speaks and says that there will be enmity between the serpent and the woman and between her offspring and the offspring of the serpent. And it's very interesting because God does not say there's going to be enmity between the serpent and humanity, nor does he say that it's the offspring of the man, the seed of the man, which is the normal way that the, the Hebrew phrase would work. But very specifically, it says it will be between your offspring and hers. It's the offspring of the woman. Now, many people reading that promise early in Israel's history would have thought, well, maybe this is a paraphrase. It's just talking about being a human. But interestingly enough, years and years, many generations and millennia later, God speaks again through Isaiah and referencing this seed says that there's going to be a sign and it's going to be that a virgin will conceive and will give birth to a child and will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so we're now picking up, and it's very clear that it is going to be through a virgin. And if the seed is coming through a virgin, then that means, of course, that a man is not involved. It's going to have to be somehow a miraculous work of God. And of course, when we come to the time of the New Testament, we see this very clearly referenced in the coming of Jesus. When Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant. He, of course, draws the assumption that any one of us would, which is that Mary had, in fact, engaged in sexual relations with another man because Joseph had not had any with her. And so he's thinking about putting her away quietly to not disgrace her, but to say that she had clearly sinned in some way. But the angel appears to Joseph in a dream and says, no, this is not what's happened. In fact, she is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and we are told that this is to fulfill the word that God had spoken to Isaiah the prophet, that the virgin would conceive, would give birth to a son, and they would call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. What an amazing promise. It traces all the way back to Eve through the prophet Isaiah, and we now find that it is fulfilled in the Virgin Mary, that God himself has come to us through Jesus Christ. There's a great picture that you can see coming up on the screen now, and we'll actually have it on our Facebook post later on this week. What an incredible picture. As Eve is there weeping over the fact that she has sinned and plucking the fruit, but God gives the promise to her that a seed is going to come later. That seed comes through the Virgin Mary, and we can see Eve with her hand resting on the womb of Mary as Jesus is still in her. And notice at the bottom, Mary is crushing the head of the serpent because the seed that is going to come is going to do battle and he is going to crush the head of the serpent. And because he has, we are saved. This is the great message that we celebrate every year in Advent, that we celebrate as we come to Christmas, that God has fulfilled that promise given long ago in the garden, which waited millennia, but came to fruition in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is actually Emmanuel, God with us. We are saved and it is the work of God, not the work of anything that we could do ourselves or we could bring about, but God has done it. He has come and we are saved. 
I hope this is an encouragement to you this week. I look forward to us worshiping together this Sunday on Christmas Eve, both in the morning and in the evening, as we celebrate the fulfillment of the promise and how we can receive it. I hope you have a great Christmas Eve and Christmas week. This is our final after hours of the year. We will not be doing one next week, but I encourage you to have a great time and celebrate for he has come. God bless. Thank you.